Hi, I'm Ali Jennings, and in this video lesson, I'm going to show you how to use one of Photoshop's blur filters to reintroduce action into your action shots. So here we have our original image taken of a mountain biker as he thunders down the hill, and it's been taken with a fast shutter speed, which has stopped all of the movement and the action in its tracks. So what we're going to do is use that Photoshop filter to reintroduce the feeling of movement and action into the picture. Once we've applied the effect, we'll end up with an image that looks just like this. And here we can see what we've done is to slowly build up the effect, which really gives the feeling of movement and speed back to our picture. So I'll get straight into it and go back to the original picture. And the first thing I need to do is just to duplicate our background layer twice. A very quick and easy way to do this is just to right click onto the background layer and just select duplicate layer and I'm going to name the first layer Radial Blur 20 and just hit OK. Then again, right click on the layer, select Duplicate Layer and this time I'm just going to call it Radial Blur 40. So the first thing I want to do is just click on to Radial Blur 20, quickly go up to Filter, down to Blur and down to Radial Blur and I want to increase the amount to 20 make sure that my blur method is set to zoom and my quality is also set to best. Now if I move the dialog window just over to the right, then I'm going to click onto the preview window. Unfortunately, it doesn't have an image preview, so you kind of have to do a little bit of guesswork, but I'm going to position that so it's pretty much just over the cyclist's stomach. When I'm happy with that, I'll just click OK to apply the effect to the picture. And once that's done, I can just click the small eye icon next to Radial Blur 40 and just see the effect that that's had. Now, just switch back on Radial Blur 40, click the layer to make sure it's selected, then go up to Filter, back down to Blur and Radial Blur. And this time, I'm going to increase the amount to 40. And because we've already set the other options, we can just leave those as they are and click OK to apply the Radial Blur to this layer. OK, and after a few moments, that'll apply the effect to the layer. And as you can see, it's a little bit more dramatic than applying the amount of 20. So what we'll do is we just switch off that Radial Blur 40 layer. And before we move on, we just want to apply a layer mask to each of those layers. So down at the bottom of the Layers palette, I just click the Layer Mask icon, then click back onto the Radial Blur 20 layer, click the Layer Mask icon again, and we now have two layer masks which we can use to reveal the effect over the background layer. Now, a very quick way to start revealing the sharpness of the background layer is just to use the gradient tool. And you'll find that over in the tool palette. So if we select the gradient tool first of all, then go up to the options at the top and we'll select the radial gradient. And then taking a look at the color swatches, we're just going to make sure that black is selected as our foreground white as our background. Now making sure that the layer mask is selected, we're just going to click into the middle of his stomach and just draw to the top of the helmet. And as you can see, that's just helped to bring back a little bit more of the detail around the face. But what we need to do is just to use the brush tool just to reveal a little bit more of the detail of the rider and the bike. So if we select the brush tool, just click onto the brush options and we're going to make sure our hardness is at zero and we're also going to select a brush of about 75 pixels but we can adjust that as we go around just by using the square bracket tools. The other thing that I'm going to do is just to make sure that I've set my opacity to about 20 percent which means that it's going to take a little bit longer but it's to reveal the sharpness of the background layer but it's also going to be a little bit more accurate. So all we need to do now is just to paint over the details of the arms and the legs and also just down here on the wheel, just really sort of starting to show some of that tire tread coming through and also the detailing in the fork. After a couple of minutes of just uh, adjusting the layer mask, we can just see the effect of that down here and you can see how the effect has been slowly built up, revealing the sharpness of the background layer. Now that we've done that, we want to kind of repeat the process on the Radial Blur 40 layer. So again, I'll just switch on the layer, click into the layer mask, go back to my Radial Gradient tool, 
and this time I'm going to click right into the middle of the stomach again and just pull it down to the end of the tire there and you can really see sort of that zoom burst effect go back to the brush tool and again I just want to use that just to hide the zoom burst effect and really get the speed and motion coming back into that picture Okay, so once I'm happy with that, the last stage is just to flatten down the image. So flattening all of those layers down into the background image so that it's ready to print. I can do that very quickly by just clicking the layer options and selecting flatten image. So there we have our final picture with radial blur applied to reintroduce motion and action into our shot. So if I just pop back and have a look at the start file, I can see that the rider's zooming down the hill, but the background's now looking a little bit distracting compared with our after shot. And what we've done by applying two levels of radial blur is just to build up the effect and get a more natural look. So we've still got the nice texture of the ground, but unlike the before shot, it's not as distracting. And we've also helped to get rid of the background, still keeping the rider in situ, but just blurring it out and really giving the image a sense of speed. So that's how to use the Photoshop CS5 Radial Blur Filter to add action and movement to your shots.